Absolutely. It's good to see you. You know, there's just some people that are just impossible to please. Have you noticed that? Yeah. There was a man who robbed a Wendy's in Atlanta and was so put off by his skimpy haul that he called the restaurant twice to voice his disapproval. But that's better than what a policeman said about Arthur Bundridge and what he did. Bundridge approached a Syracuse, New York bank teller and demanded $20,000. When he got home, he discovered he'd been shortchanged. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Outraged, he stormed back to the bank to tell them what he thought of their service. And that's when he was arrested. Some people just don't think things through, you know. <laughs> and some people are easily offended. Mm, do you know people like that? Easily offended? Just like wear their emotions on their sleeve. Oh, you said, you did, you acted, you, you looked at me funny. You rolled your eyes. Don't do that. Anyway, for all the money that's spent on vacations, is it too much to expect perfection? What do you think? These travelers didn't think so. Here's a taste of what they told their travel agents. On my holiday to India, I was disgusted to find that almost every restaurant served curry. I don't like spicy food at all. A guest at a Novotel in Australia complained... That his soup was too thick. He was inadvertently slurping gravy. You ever do that? <laughs> All the time. There you go. <laughs> Following a trip to a national theme park, one angry woman complained that the sun was so hot it melted her ice cream. Can you do something about that sun? <laughs> right? <laughs> An air traveler voiced her disapproval of all the clouds in the sky, saying they ruined her children's game of I Spy. That's just awful, isn't it? The things we have to put up with. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I want to talk to you about how to stop complaining. So, open. Oh, I better go. <laughs> I'm in the wrong place. No, you're in the right place. Lock the doors. Got No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, this is for all the people who are not here, right? So those empty chairs. They should be here, but they're not. Doggone it. I knew, it. you know, they should have been here. But I want to tell you something. It's not really your fault. And, and, and it's true. It's not your fault, Okay. The world that we live in, the culture that we grew up in, the family that we were raised in, well, they taught us how to complain. You know? Well. Well. And some of them are experts, you know? And, and some of us have become kind of expert at grumbling and complaining and criticizing, you know? And, and so worries in some families like an art form, right? I remember... My family, we were great worriers. We could worry the wallpaper off the wall, let me tell you. I mean, just worry, worry, worry. It was like an art form. Yeah, anybody ha grow up in a family like that besides me? <laughs> okay, all right, good. So, <clears throat> however much you can release, the need to habitual complaining will correspond to how much better your life will become. Say with me, oh, ooh, aha, maybe, because see, a lot of times we've got this negative programming going when it's constant complaining, and that keeps us at a low vibe. So therefore we don't attract into our lives the things that we need, the things that we want, because we're always complaining and grumbling and griping, and there's always something to, oh, mumble, 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 you know, be upset about, Right? So, most of our complaining is because of the world and everything in it is temporary. And doggone it, I just don't like that. 
right? We don't like it because everything's temporary. Did you notice that your car will eventually rust out? <laughs> right? You get a lot of miles on it after a while and, and stuff falls apart on it. And you, it doesn't matter how great the car is. You can have a, an expensive car or a cheap car and, and they all wear out eventually, right? And where do they end up? They all end up in the junkyard. Isn't that amazing? you got repairs that you need to make around the house. and You know, it's like here at the church. We've been here for like six and a half years. And it's like stuff is starting to fall apart. All of the, the, the ballast and all the lights started going out. And I think we've almost replaced them all. You know? And we had to repaint the doors and, and uh, you know, just kind of do a refreshing and, and kind of get it looking better and, and that kind of thing. Because, you know, it's temporary. Everything's temporary. Can you accept that fact? <laughs> you'll, you'll be a lot better off if you do. If you can see that. So Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for the building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Doesn't that sound good? Like a good thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Did you know that complaining actually impairs your brain? Complaining actually impairs your brain. Really, it shrinks the brain. Now, I don't know about you, but I need my brain. <laughs> right? I need all of it. I do. Even listening to extended complaining can cause the problem-solving part of your brain to shut down. Mm. This is scientific, what we're talking about this morning. You may have had this experience as I've had, where you're enjoying just talking, you know, to, and living your life, and you're having a good day, and then you talk to somebody, and all they can do is complain about someone or something. And suddenly you can't think straight anymore and your mood begins to go down. Right? It's something, isn't it? And then all of a sudden your energy is gone. You ever talk to somebody and when they leave you're just like... <laughs> you know what I mean? Did, did I convey the... <laughs> yeah, I felt that way sometimes. Yeah. Some people are so draining, you know. And I did this, and I said that, and I told them, and I just can't understand why everything right. Right? It's just draining. <laughs> it really is. Research shows that exposure to 30 minutes or more of negativity, including viewing such material on TV actually peels away neurons in the brain's hippocampus. I need those neurons. <laughs> right? Don't you? Yeah. That's the part of your brain that you need for problem solving. That's solution oriented. It kind of figures things out. Basically, complaining, whether you're listening to it or you're involved in it, Turns your brain to mush. Mm. You know? How many know that there's nothing wrong with acknowledging negative things when they happen? Right? Stuff happens. <coughs> flat tire. You have a flat tire? It happens. You know? I had a, a guy that comes here and he told me, he said he had changed a lot. Changed a lot. And one of the proofs were he was out one day with his father. And they were driving along and he had a flat tire. And so without saying anything, he just got out, went, got out everything he needed. He changed the tire, put it back together, got back in the car. And his dad looked at him and said, who are you? Because <laughs> this is not his... Standard operating procedure, right? Not his M.O. 
And, but that's because he had changed. He realized, you know, you just got it right. Stuff happens. Stuff happens. Say it with me. Stuff happens. Yeah. Right? People are shocked because stuff happens. Oh, my. Something happened. Wow. But stuff happens. It's okay to acknowledge when stuff happens. Acknowledge the frustration that you feel, the anger about the situation of person or whatever triggered you. How many know, as long as you have a button that can be pushed, it shall be pushed. <laughs> right? In this world, that's just the way it is. If, if you got a button that can be pushed, somebody's going to be pushing on it. And here's the interesting thing, the button's on the inside. When you get around certain people, you start pushing it. Because we're pushing it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so there's nothing wrong with acknowledging negative things when they happen, you know. And 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 and, and I think it, you know, it's it's okay to complain for a few moments. A few moments, but not all day. Every day, most days, most of the time. How many, you get into that, and, and it, your life is just going to go down the hill. I'm telling you the truth this morning. Say it with me. He's telling me the truth. <laughs> it's true. It is true. And you know that you know this, right? <laughs> I mean, this is good for you. This is medicine for your soul today, right? It really is. And so... <clears throat> The second thing you can do is look for solutions. If you're only focused on what is wrong all the time, how many know that some people are experts on everything that's bad? What's wrong with the world? Let me tell you about it. And they bring out their list. And it all unfolds, you know. Well, it's the president. It's the Congress. It's the Senate. It's the preacher. Some people go home, they have fried preacher. Fricasseed board member. Right? And boiled music directors. People do that kind of stuff. I didn't know if you... Over dinner! <laughs> they have them for dinner. See, you know... People have a list. They have a list of things they don't like. And, and boy, you don't do anything that they don't like or they're going to bring it up. Gonna point it out. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I remember we had a particular relative and uh, she's very honest. Extremely honest about everything. And some of us had kind of gained a few pounds. And so the first thing that was stated when you walked into this person's presence was she acted as a measuring, <laughs> you know, device, I guess. And said, you're fat. <laughs> you're really getting fat. And like it's, you know, I gained a few. Well, you need to go on a diet. What's wrong with you? You know, this authoritative kind of a thing, you know, and slap you upside the face with it. Kind of. How many love that when people do that? Anybody here? Oh, you just love it. Oh, yeah. Beat me up some more. Hit me again. <laughs> The truth is, nobody likes it. So let's not do it, right? Let's not do it. Always try to find something good about somebody, you know? Try to find something. You know, if somebody smiles and says, man, you got a beautiful smile. Have you ever told somebody, you light up a room when you walk, walk in? How does that make you feel on the inside? I just, right? Like a balloon. Ah, you're feeling better. I love compliments, don't you? Yeah. Tell me what I'm doing right. Don't tell me what I'm doing wrong, because I probably already know. I'm just, 
in denial about it. You know? And I just don't want to hear about it. You know what I'm saying? Just don't bring it up. If i got to lose a few pounds, uh, just pray for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just pray for me from a distance. <laughs> now, if i got spinach in my teeth, that's okay. you can point that out. You know, I'd rather go ahead and get that out. But anyway. <laughs> so, <clears throat> looking for solutions. Looking for solutions. So don't stay focused on the negative. Because when you do, you hinder your growth and you keep the solutions from coming to you. Because when you're in the negative frame of mind, you cut off the creativity. You cut off that creative part of yourself. And when you're doing that, what you're doing is you're cutting off the flow, the the divine connection. You're cutting off your divine connection when you complain. When you grumble. Right? So, how many want to stay joined with your connection all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, just think about it. When you start complaining, in the Bible it says, the tongue is deadly, a deadly viper full of poison. (laughs) The tongue. And the Bible also says, no man can tame the tongue. <laughs> right? Have you ever been hung by your tongue? Right? You ever said something in the moment that you wish you could take back? Ooh. Does that happen? How many understand that you can be empowered so that you don't have to do that? You don't have to say those things. You don't have to complain all the time, right? Give yourselves a few moments and then do what? Let it go. go. Yeah. Frozen. Let it go. Let it go. However that song goes. And I know some of you grandparents and parents that you've heard it over, over, (laughs) over again. We have a granddaughter that's two years old and she heard it and that's all she wants to do is play it. I don't know what they, how they do it. There must be some kind of programming in it or something, you know. I don't know. Anyway, it's wild. So, <clears throat> the key is, in, in the Bible it says in the book of James, if you need wisdom, ask for it. Ask for it. When you ask for wisdom, then that opens up that creative part of yourself. Say, you're dipping in to, to creativity, to more solutions that can come into your life. Say, when you're complaining, you're activating a different part of your brain, a very limited part, and you're shutting down the good parts. This is science. Is this practical or what this morning? Right? This is practical stuff, and this is so important. Because we've all, you know, like I said, it's not your fault. You know, monkey see, monkey do. (laughs) Right? (laughs) We just, you know, just learned to do it. So, I like what Wayne Dyer says. He said, acceptance means no complaining. And happiness means no complaining about the things over which you can do nothing. Right? You can't do anything about somebody else and the way they think, the way they act, the way they talk, the way they are. Right? So why spend any time at all trying to, you know, in your mind you just, oh, I wish they'd straighten up. I wish they'd quit acting like that. I wish they'd stop it. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You just did. You just did. Another neuron. There it goes. Come back. Come back. Right? (laughs) It happens. I don't know about you, but I need all the neurons I can get. I want to renew them and keep them juiced up and working good. And when, you know, when you're in that creative gratitude 
appreciation mode, then, you know, oh, your brain is just, yeah, baby, hoo, hoo, ha. Loves it. Loves it. But when you're complaining, your brain is on high. Same old stuff, huh? Because most of the things we complain about, we've done it before. We've said it before, right? We've picked on that person before. We've accused that person before. We've blamed that one before. We've gotten mad about this situation before, right? It's, it's old stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's old stuff. And so acceptance means no complaining. We accept the things that happen in our life. Stuff happens, right? Stuff happens. Another tool that you can put in your toolbox is change your perspective in the way that you look at the situation. The way that you're looking at it. Mm. Right? That's important. Because if you're always... Most people walk around looking at everything the same way. With a critical eye. Have you ever seen those birds? The vultures? Some people are like that. I'm looking for dead flesh. You got something to eat? You know? Pick, 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 pick. pick. Picking people. And uh, that's, that's the way they view life. They view life from the negative. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's probably going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Recession. Depression. Depression. Death. We're all going to die. It's like the conspiracy theories, you know. People love that stuff. And here's the thing. The, the bottom line of a conspiracy theory, theory typically is we're all going to die. <laughs> you know? What kind of solution is that? So what? You're pointing out the obvious. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's greedy people in the world. There are control freaks in the world. Ask me how I know. I'm James King and I'm a control freak. <laughs> how about you? Are you willing to admit it? Are you willing to go into some recovery here this morning? Yeah. You need any recovery? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're laughing now, but later on you'll be going, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> See, problem situations and, and problem people give you the opportunity to grow. It's just an opportunity. And you might be saying, James, are you saying this is another friggin' growth opportunity? <laughs> Say it with me. Yes. <laughs> right? It is. It is. That's right. Everybody's your teacher. See, we're, we're all... Did you know you're a professional dancer? Now, some people only know one dance, you know. You know what I mean? They know one dance, and that's it. So every person that comes into their life, they do the same dance. Right? But what you want to do is you want to learn how to dance with people. Yeah, people coming in and out of your life all the time when you're at the drugstore and you're dancing around with all these people, the person at the checkout, you know, the people walking around and you're just smiling at them. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? You know, and here's my stuff I need and, you know, and my Gatorade and whatever it is and, and you pay for your stuff. Say, thanks, appreciate it. And Yeah. <laughs> right. I can't wait till I get off. 
<laughs> it's like, well, okay. All right. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> That's the way most people are. Not a lot of people. I'll we'll just say a lot of people are that way. Just, you know, eh. I don't like my life. Don't like what I'm doing. Don't like my job. You know, when you go into a place, you kind of wish that they'd like what they're doing. And I almost sometimes want to say, well, maybe you should do something else. Because <laughs> obviously this isn't working for you. <laughs> right? But how many know you don't have to let them bring you down? You can just be a positive, uplift, uplifting kind of a person. You know. The best of your ability. And, and that comes through different people different ways, right? Some people are real, you know, hey, 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 how you doing? You know, they're real extroverted and putting out the energy, man, and, and everything is, all their hunkies are dory. You know what I mean? <laughs> then there's some that are a little more introverted and they're just kind of quiet. Just, hi. How you doing? <laughs> and that's good, Right? Because introverted people take things inside and the whole, oh, yeah. They don't let them out. But an extroverted person, you know, they're, they're, hey, they go on Facebook and tell all their secrets. <laughs> Why, this is the worst day I have ever had in my life. And I've got this horrible itch. It just won't go away. I went to the doctor and the doctor prescribed this medication. And Could you come over to the house for a while and so we can talk? You know what I mean? <laughs> I know why you're laughing because it's so true, you know. It's so true. Um, <clears throat> here's what Maya Angelou said. Remember Maya Angelou, beautiful poet. She, she was actually studying to become a unity minister. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wonderful lady. But anyway, she said, what you're supposed to do when you don't like a thing is change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it, but don't complain. Right? Change the way you think about it. In other words, I was talking about the dances. You know, if somebody's doing the foxtrot, do the foxtrot with them. <laughs> However that goes. I, I don't know. I don't do the foxtrot. Yeah. Or the Charleston. Or the, or the, you know, I remember what. <laughs> yeah, really, I get the one dance. <laughs> Sometimes I can do this. <laughs> It's that finger action, you know what I mean? <laughs> but learning to be flexible and kind of going with the flow of where people are in the moment. If they're sad, then just say, oh, I understand, you know, you know you're know, you going through a rough time right now. You're going through a rough time. And, and you can be with them, you can hold them, you can talk to them, you can, or give them space as the case may be, Right? How many understand that we got to use wisdom with, with each other? You know, because we're all divine, organic beings. And sometimes things feel good and sometimes they don't feel good. Make sense? And so we all need our space. We all need, you know, somebody to kind of lift us up. You know, if you're feeling bad and somebody says, oh, get over it. What's wrong with you? You must not be very spiritual. <laughs> right? If you were really spiritual, you wouldn't be sick. No, you don't do that. What do you, you comfort them. Use a little compassion. And you know what? Compassion is a healing energy. Comfort is healing. I'm not saying, you know, going overboard. Oh, you poor baby. Oh, you sad little thing. You poor little victim. The world is against you, and I'm so sorry. You know, not that, right? I'm just saying a little comfort, a little grace, a little... You see what I'm saying? We all need that, don't we? Sure, we all do. So, and like I said, sometimes you just need to walk away. When you, when you get into a crowd, and they're just complaining and grumbling, give a little distance, right? And if you can't give any physical space, 
then put a little psychological space between you and the other person. Ooh, say with me. Ah. There's another tool for your tool belt. Right? Psychological space. And what I mean by that, get a feeling of spaciousness between you and the person. Because most people were like this with them. And we're over analyzing them. Don't say that. Oh, analyzing. Over analyzing. Yeah. Sorry about that. And, and we're too close. Psychologically, we need to kind of pull back a little bit so that we can see them as a whole person instead of looking at their little missing parts and incompleteness. Right? Kind of pull back and just give them a little, little space. Psychological space, right? Psychological space. That's important. That's very important. For you and for them. Make sense? Here's what... Because uh, what you can do is you, you move to a place where you can think a more positive thought. You know, unity is founded on the idea of the new thought movement, right? It's all about new thoughts. Of course, there's some people in unity that haven't had a new thought in a long time. <laughs> Don't look at anybody. Don't hit anybody. He's he thought about you. Don't do that. <laughs> but a new thought opens you up to creativity, opens you up to problem solving, opens you up to finding solutions. Yeah. It's like somebody told me one time, you know, they... They were trying to make it big in the, in the recording, you know, music. And they wrote a song and they didn't like it. I said, well, what can you do? He said, I don't know, I guess just give up. I said, you know what you could do? Go write another song. <laughs> write another song. And if that doesn't work, write another one. You see what I'm saying? There's always something you can do positively. Positively. That can make a difference in your life. Isn't that great? Yeah. So here's what Eckhart Tolle says from The Power of Now. Did you read that book, The Power of Now? We did a book study on it once. It's a great book. Everybody should read it because it really is a basic foundation to how to understand yourself and how to live free in this world. Anyway, here's what he says. See if you can catch yourself complaining. And either speech or thought... Jesus said, even if you think it, you've already done it. Isn't that what he said? About a situation that you find yourself in, what other people do or say, your surroundings, your life situation, even the weather. It's amazing how many people that we have that are so knowledgeable about the weather. <laughs> it's 100 degrees out there. It's 145 with the humidity. You know? It's hot. And I don't like it hot. And then some people, it's like, it's cold. It's too cold. It shouldn't be this cold. Why is it so cold? Hot and, I don't like the cold. Right? And some people, they don't like the wind. It's too windy. Blows my hair do. Took me forever to get this right. You know? Boy, I, I've been going on and on here. <laughs> Let me finish what he said. To complain... To complain is always non-acceptance of what is. It invariably carries an unconscious negative charge. Ooh. Want to be negatively charged? <laughs> when you complain, you make yourself into a victim. When you speak out, you are in your power. So change the situation by taking action or by speaking out if necessary or possible. Leave the situation or accept it. All else is madness. Madness. Don't be mad. <laughs> right? Don't be crazy. Keep a gratitude list. 
remember one time in my life I was really down. It seemed like the world was against me. Oh my. Stuff was going on. And I started just to think about things that were good. I just started writing them down. You know what? Long before I had a big list, and the little list of things I didn't like compared to the, all the good things, it's like, wow. Wow. So keep a gratitude list going all the time. When you get up in the morning, when you walk through your day, just think about what's good in the world. What's right about your life? What are you doing that's, that's good? What's your partner doing that's good for you? There's a lot of good stuff they're doing for you. Right? Let them know. Compliment them. Thank them. Say thank you. Appreciate them. To appreciate something means to build them up in value. To build up in value like a house appreciates in value. So do people. As you appreciate them. As you bless them. Thank you. So before you leave today, you should, you should think like, you know, five people. Say so thank you for being here. Thanks for wearing that red shirt. Bring a little excitement. Thank you for, you know, the smile that you gave me, the handshake, the hug, whatever it was, the song that Melissa's getting ready to sing. Come on up, Melissa. She's going to do a song for us. Just a moment. Let's close our eyes. <clears throat> I'm going to challenge you this week to see if you can go a week without complaining. And catch yourself when you do. And if you do, then start all over from that point. See if you can go seven days without complaining. And if that feels good, then go eight. Et cetera, et cetera. And my prayer for you today is that God will guide you and lead you and that you will find creative solutions to all the areas of your life 